Hey folks, can you hear me? If you can uh, type in the comment box, etc., etc., just to double check this is all working. See Adam. Adam, no, this is not on Zoom. Just streaming to YouTube and Facebook. Bombastic Raymond, hey, 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 nice. Roughly one minute to go. Lovely jubbly. And for those of you who haven't met Pips, this is Pips. She's my little trading assistant. You're a good girl, aren't you? Molting all over, Daddy. Hmm. <laughs> right, thirty seconds down. Right, pips, you get down. Let's get this show on the road. Okay, that's time. Let's do this. Right, so thank you everyone that's uh, here. There's, whoa, 90 of you. That's a bit more than I thought. Uh, so I did a presentation on Friday at, um, at a big event. It was like a pro property event. And some of the things that I said in it, oh, in fact, I'm, I'm going to talk about just the, the, the most important thing that we all need to know. And for those who've been following me for a while, you've probably heard me say this a few times, but I really want to drive home this one point because when I speak to random people about crypto, um, and I mentioned this, this really important point, people just go, ah, okay, yeah, sure. And they, they don't put enough weight to it. And you could just ignore everything other than this one thing, and it'll tell you everything you need to know about crypto and what you should do as a result of it. So I've adjusted the slides a, uh, a little bit um, just to make it a bit more relevant to us. I'm gonna, I've cut a few bits and bobs out. Um, and also, I'm going to be going through this this PowerPoint, um, so I won't have I won't be able to see what's going on in the chat box. So. Just a quick bullshit detector warning. If anyone, in fact, just not just here, but in life, if anyone says, hey, send me one Bitcoin and I'll send you two Bitcoins back or 0.1 Bitcoin and I'll send you 2.2 Bitcoins back, it's a scam, okay? <laughs> I can't believe people still fall for this shit. So um, let's do this. Swap the screen. Oh, my lordy. Share screen. Here we go. Let's do that one. And then if I do this, will that work? Swap the screens. Cool. Okie dokie, here's the plan. So we're going to talk about the one, the, the, the one most important thing to understand about crypto. What to buy, where to buy, how to buy it. So I am also assuming that there's a, a, a bunch of newbies here. Um, seeing, I mean, I am seeing a lot of newbies come into the market at the moment. And then my personal plan with crypto, and I won't, yeah, we're going to ignore 0.4. So for those who don't know me, this is me. I pretty much have a big windfall every few years. Um, and that's just simply uh, 
based on the way that I trade. I am a trend trader and I fill my boots during times of um, extreme volatility. So whenever we have a global market crash of some sort, whether it be stocks or bonds or commodities or crypto, I like to fill my boots. So that's me. Um, yeah, terrific. Great, great guy. Uh, I don't mean to, <laughs> so I don't mean to blow my own trumpet, but the, the, the thing is, unlike the horde of pretenders out there, I've actually been trading for a while. Um, and one of the unfortunate things about the crypto market is that since 2017, the average, you know, I've seen so many people that have never invested in their lives. They've bought, you know, a Bitcoin and it's gone up, you know, fivefold or whatever. And all of a sudden they're a crypto expert. And, and there seems to be this echo chamber, which is why you, you need to sometimes use the Twitter sphere and YouTube sphere as a bit of a contrarian indicator sometimes, because they're all just looking at other YouTube videos, trying to go, and then they end up repeating the same stuff. And so this is why they, they tend to be incorrect in, in general. Now, I could spend, as you all know me, uh, I could spend an hours going through each of these few points I'm about to um, spool out. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I could I could go on about how this is the best profit to risk investment ever in human history. Um, I could go on about how crypto is creating millions of jobs, software innovation, product creation, real physical stuff in the real world. It's one of the biggest drivers of sustainable energy. Uh, contrary to all of the fear uh, that you're seeing in the media, and also people not really understanding Elon's uh, tweets about the um, energy stuff. It's helping bank the 3 billion people that don't have a bank account. It's banking the unbanked. So crypto really is, is a massive driver for the developing world. Not necessarily, you know, us middle, normal folk, middle class, I guess, <laughs> um, or whoever you are, uh, us folk in the UK, let's say. Uh, it's also helping um, the remittance world. So Western Union and other um, companies like that have a, 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 a monopoly or, pon or a scam monopoly on this. So there are hundreds of millions of people all over the world that work abroad. They work really hard. Um, and then they send money back to their family. And so what happens when they do that, they tend to get bent over and they lose 10 to 30% of what they send abroad. Well, with crypto or Bitcoin, even Bitcoin's the slow and clunky one, um, they can get around that and lose bugger all fees. Uh, it's help, it will help revolution, you know, revolutionize voting. Um, it will decentralize and disintermediate every single industry out there. If you are a middleman, you are screwed. I don't care what type of middleman business or industry you're in, you will be disintermediated. And that includes the banks. Uh, I was chatting with a, a couple of estate agents and they were shocked when I said that. I was like, yep, you're screwed. Um, however, there are ways or, around it. Um, it's unlocking illiquid assets and making them liquid. This is huge in itself. Again, I'm not going to go into these. I'm just reeling off a few um, bits and bobs. If you take gold, gold is a $10 trillion market, yet it's clunky, has no yield. It's, it's hard to transport and store. It's just clunky full stop, yet it's a $10 trillion market cap. What if gold wasn't that clunky, wasn't that slow, wasn't that expensive to store and sell and had a good secondary market? Well, it would have a much bigger market cap. <laughs> um, and so not only crypto, like crypto is just unlocking so many illiquid assets from um, company valuations and equity to everything that gold does, real estate um, and more. It's creating brand new markets never seen before. One of my, my students, uh, I think Steve Woody, I don't know if he's here. So he, um, yeah, he's now really venturing fast and forward into uh, the pay to earn industry within crypto. And he's helping a whole bunch of, I guess, Filipinos earn, earn money. Um, I don't know if he's doing other nations. Oh, we'll, I'll chat with Steve later. Um, oh, you're here. Hey, mate. So yeah, Steve's doing great things over there. So you have brand new markets, and, and, and it's, this is just the beginning. You can have instant loans with no expiry date. This is just insane. Like the other day, or not the other day, the other month, I took out a $50,000 crypto loan um, in like two minutes, and I didn't have to give my inside leg measurement and, you know, have to put a debenture or a charge on my first unborn child or whatever. Like crypto loans, yeah, and no expiry date. So you can take these loans out forever. Um, and the added 
uh, bonus to that is with these crypto loans, you you basically have to put up the collateral. So you you know you put I don't know hundred grand or ten grand's worth of Bitcoin or Ether as collateral, and then you can borrow up to eighty percent of that. And so they're going to turn into self liquidating loans because as the collateral increases, so as the price of your Ether or Bitcoin, whatever you 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 parked, increases, your loan to value is going to drop precipitously. Um, I've done loads of examples in the past. I mean, all of, everything I've said, I think, is in various bits and bobs in the, the crypto playlist on all, all my free YouTube videos. But I think I've done examples before where you take out a 50% loan to, loan to value. And then over a five, six year period, that LTV goes down to like 8% and then 2% at, if Bitcoin or Ether does what I think it's going to do. Um, and as I said, <laughs> crypto does everything, or Bitcoin does everything gold does. Uh, but better without the cons. It's more liquid. It's easier. It's cheaper. It's um, as in cheaper to transact and store and and um, deal with people. Um, so I mean, a lot of people are going, oh yeah, Bitcoin is going to take over the the, the ten trillion dollar market cap that gold has. Yeah, it's going to gobble that up, and it's going to have thirds and fourths for that. You know, on top of that, it's going to like if you truly unlocked the the mechanics that gold has on the planet, it's more than ten trillion dollar market. But because it's so old and clunky and slow, it keeps it low. Um, and it's cheap and fast to send money across the world. Literally on a weekly basis, there are whales out there sending tens of millions of dollars cross borders for, for literally uh, a few dollars. Um, so, whereas like if you were to do that with traditional fiat, whether it's pounds, dollars, uh, yen, whatever, it's typically T plus three quarter of a percent or half a percent. So what that means, it takes three days for you to move money cross borders and anything from 0.25 to 0.5%. So if you're sending billions, you're going to be paying millions in fees. And it takes three freaking days, by which point, point the currency exchanges, have, you know, the currency uh, prices have changed. And that's why there's a, um, a liquidity market with global transfers. I mean, that's going to die as well. But again, all of these things are completely irrelevant. I could have just made all of those things out of my ass and just, they, they, let's say they, they're all false, okay? <laughs> let's say every single thing I just said is false. It's completely irrelevant. Um, it, it does not matter because there's only one reason why it's critically essential for the protection of your future finances, and this is it. Here, we have a typical family, okay? So there's Arj, and Arj is a software developer, um, he's about 35, 40 years old. Um, he earns well. I'm going to put, <clears throat> you could put these in like UK equivalents. He's earning, you know, the equivalent of 45, 50 grand a year. Um, he's happy. He's done well with his life. He's, he's done everything he's been taught to, uh, throughout his life. He's done, worked hard at school. He's got good grades. He's gone to uni. He's got a degree. He's got a pension and an ISA. He's bought a house because he married the love of his life, Tina. Um, and they're doing everything as they, they, as you know, the society thinks you should do. Now, Tina again is just like Arj in many ways. Um, <laughs> Adam saying, "Next slide, please." Um, just, just so I'm aware, what slide can you see? Can you see my stick men? Arj, uh, Arj and Tina, lovely. Yeah, so Tina again is a is a project manager. She is. She does really well for herself. She's earning about 40, 45k uh, a year, and yeah, they're, they're doing everything. They're they're contributing to their pension, yada yada yada, and then they popped out two sprogs. Okay, so I guess they are typical. Yeah, typical middle class. I guess lower middle, upper middle, whatever. I, I don't really know the classes too well, um, but this is Arj and Tina, and they are the typical couple. Now. Let's just assume that Arj and Tina lived <clears throat> in some South American country and, and they, they started their lives, you know, in, you know, the, it's the year 2000 and one peso equaled one dollar. I'm going to lose the, the <laughs> I think we can all tell that I'm talking about Argentina, by the way. Um, so year 2000, one peso equals one dollar. It's... Uh, Ah, uh, I see what you're saying, Adam. The slides are 10 seconds behind the the streaming shizzle. I, uh, I see YouTube and Facebook are crap <laughs> with live streams. Okay, thanks. That's, that's helped. Um, 
so yeah, okay, let's start again. So year two thousand, one peso equals one US dollar. Um, the and back then, yeah, everything was hunky dory. And believe it or not, Argentina used to be the richest, richest country on the planet. They used to be saying, you know, oh, you're as rich as an Argentine. Um, and I mean, that was a long time ago. Anyway, five years passed, and Argentina. I really should have picked different names. Let's call them uh, Pablo and um, Pab Paula. Pablo and Paula. They're good old Argentinian names. So Pablo and Paula, they realized after five years, three pesos equals one dollar. And they're a bit concerned because all of a sudden they've had a 66% crash in the purchasing power of their currency. And when you look at the chart, the chart looks like this. As you can see, it's been one peso to one dollar for a long, long, long time. And then it suddenly spikes up in 2002 to 3.6 and then hovers around three. In fact, now I know that there's a lag. I'm not sure what I can do. <laughs> um, maybe be a bit faster on the slides. I'm not sure. In fact, I'm just going to keep on talking, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, that's what happens. And it hovers around three, do uh, three pesos to a dollar. For a while. And so Pablo and Paula, they go to their IFA, their financial advisor, and they go, hey, um, should we be concerned? And then guess what the IFA says? The IFA says, nah, you're fine. I've got you in a lovely portfolio of diversified assets and tracker funds and low cost tracker funds. And so they go on with their merry lives. They carry on doing their do. They, they're, they're working, they're earning well. Um, and then another five years pass and it's crept up. So there's, there's four, four pesos to a dollar now. So from the beginning, from 2000, that, that represents a 75% purchase increase. And so they go, so looking at the chart, it's crept up a little bit. They're still a bit concerned because it's, it's a long way off from the, you know, the one peso a while back. Um, they go back to their financial advisor. And they say, hey, um, you know, all things are going well. We're earning well. Things are good. Pension's fine. Our ISA is fine. Should we be concerned? And he says, nah, you're fine. I've got you in a lovely portfolio of diversified assets and tracker funds. Just carry on doing what you're doing. And so they do that. But five years pass, and it's now 8.5 pesos to a dollar. They're, they're starting to get a little bit concerned now because, you know, Paula... And Pablo, they're, they're, they're switched on people. They're professionals and they've realized they've lost 88% of their, their purchasing um, power. And so the chart looks like it's really starting to creep up and they're getting really concerned now. So they go back to their financial advisor and they say, this seems to be running away. I thought you said things would come back down to normal. And what does he say? The IFA says, nah, you're fine. I've got you in a lovely portfolio of diversified assets and low-cost tracker funds. In fact, what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll add in a few structured products in there for you just to spice it up, just to try and get you a little bit more ROI. And so Pablo and Paula are like, mm, okay, right. Okay, we'll see, we'll see if, if we go. Five years past, it's now 2020, and it's shot up to 62 pesos for a dollar. That's a 98.3% purchasing power collapse from where they were in the year 2000. And the chart is running away big time. They are livid. Paula and Pablo are livid. We're ruined. And they can now physically see the, the, the effects of this currency dilution because they can't buy anything. They're no longer wealthy middle class people in their country. They, 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 they can't buy anything. But what does their financial advisor say? Now nah, you're fine. I've got you in a lovely portfolio of, di a portfolio of diversified assets and low-cost tracker funds and the odd structured product. Well, guess what? It's now 2021 and it's 97 pesos for a dollar. It's a massive collapse. And that is a chart as of Friday. Um, that is what it is right now. And it won't be long until it's 100 and now they can't break groceries and the IFA just goes, sorry to inform you that you, we can no longer manage your funds as they've fallen below our limit. And I've got a mate called Graham Rowan who had exactly that thing. 
Um, his money managers lost him a, a truckload of money in 2000. And then because the amount of money he had dropped below their um, the, their <clears throat> company requirements, they just booted him out. And that happens across the board. And with when you understand compounding interest and exponential growth, just, just look at the mathematical model. Over the next four years, so by 2025, we should see it north of 700 pesos for a dollar. And uh, it's, it's, it's just it's an absolute joke. Now, here's what's happened. So obviously, Pablo and Paula are my two little stick men that I've drawn. But these are real world examples um, of many, many people that I've read in Argentina. And one bad case is that um, Pablo died. And the reason Pablo died was not because it was an incurable disease. It was, it was a curable uh, condition, but he had no money and no health care to get serviced. And so he died and leaving Paula, a single mum, and the two sprogs are now, you know, toddler or small kids and they're foraging for food every day. Now we think, I mean, I mean, that, that's just dreadful. Uh, so um, we've seen this over the last 20 years, not just in Argentina, we're seeing it all over the world in countries where they have absolutely just rammed their currency down the toilet. And you're seeing professionals having to resort to yeah, desperate measures. So if you were uh, oh yeah, Pablo and Paula, how could you have avoided this? This is the key thing. How could you have avoided this? So you need to borrow as much money as you can in the peso and then lever to the max. You need to forward finance as much as you can if you're a business owner. Um, as in, you know, try and get forward payments. As in, you know, if you have a membership, try and get a year's worth of membership up front for a, a bit of a discount. So that's, that's one option. If you have assets, whether business assets or assets or physical assets, borrow on them, but in the peso. And then you need to convert the pesos every uh, whenever you get them into the US dollar. But here's the thing. You could do all of this and still get screwed. You can do all of this and still be screwed because you haven't stored it offshore. And and some people actually did this in, in Argentina. They did, did everything. They, they knew what was going on. They converted as much pesos as they could to the US dollar, but they left those dollars in Argentinian banks. And so what happened is Argentina went, ah, oh, yeah, we have a dollar shortage. So we're just going to steal your, your dollars and we'll just give you um, the, the equivalent amount of pesos in, in return. And so you're back to square one. You've, you're back in pesos. So you have to store those US dollars off sure, where the government can't put its filthy mitts into your bank account. So that's how Paula and Pablo um, could have got around this. But here's the thing I see all of the time. I mean, look at this. Argentina, over 50% of Argentinians are below the poverty line. And every single day, when it, or every single time I speak to crypto, you know, this about crypto, um, uh, to someone, or most people, they're like, yeah, yeah, I get it. But um, yeah, currency dilutions, all that sort of stuff, I get it. But it'll never get that bad here. And this is where my brain suddenly melts because in that instance, I, I realize the person I'm speaking to just doesn't have enough, I guess, economic wherewithal to sort of really understand this point. This is the most important point you, you will ever learn about crypto. This is akin to being on the Titanic and going, Hey, um, we need to get on this lifeboat um, because the, we've just hit something and it's highly likely the boat's about to sink. But then the person you're speaking to, yeah, go, oh, yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine. But uh, I'll just stay in my penthouse suite for the moment because um, I've got a massage booked for tomorrow morning and then I've got a Pilates lesson um, straight after that. And, uh, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I don't think you get it. We've hit a massive iceberg and the lower compartments are filling up with water and it's pretty obvious we're about to sink. We need to get onto this lifeboat, like now. Um, there, there are not many lifeboats left. We need to jump over here. No, 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 I, I get what you're saying, Simon, but it's fine. We, we spent a lot of money on this penthouse suite and um, we've got a lovely buffet for lunch tomorrow. Do you want to join us? And it's like, oh my God. And so at the end of the day, a lot of these people, you're just going to have to abandon them. And I guess in, in the real world, these people that I'm having these conversations to are my close friends and family that just don't understand this, no matter how much I try and ram it down their throat. So at the end of the day, you're going to have to get in your own lifeboat. 
um, and then try and extend a little rubber dinghy, um, a little rubber ring around them um, if you can in the future. And so people think it doesn't get that bad and because we're in a massive country like the UK or you know the US or whatever. But just look at the US M2 supply. So this is, I mean, there are four ways of looking at M2. There's M0, M1, M2, and M3. Um, M3 is the biggest, broadest um, sort of snapshot of the US currency supply. But everyone looks at M2. And M2 is all hard cash and everything in your checking accounts and, and checks. Um, and it's, it's what everyone looks at. Well, just look at what the US did to its M2 currency supply. Uh, it's nuts. Last year, they created roughly 25% more dollars in existence. And um, as you can see towards the, the right-hand side here, it shot up from just under 16 trillion. It's now above 21 trillion. And, um, but obviously, using the big words like trillion doesn't really help people because they're like, oh, well, yeah, okay, it's too big a number. I don't really understand it. Um, but the thing is, you have to under understand why, 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 do developed worlds go through this crazy process of debasing its currency supply? Why? Now, I'm going I'm, to, I'm speeding through this, by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure I could add a lot more context and detail to each slide, but I, I think most of you get the point. I want to get to, I guess, the punchline. Well, this is the only reason, this is the only reason why, current, why countries kill their currency supply and print, 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 print. Now, there are lots of sort of subsidiary reasons or, some, you know, some sub reasons why they want to print, you know, because they've got to pay for all the COVID bailouts, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's one reason. But the ultimate reason why current uh, governments print, print, print is due to currency velocity. So as you can see here, we hit, you know, the world was genuinely booming. Pre, you know, mid 1990s, we had the roaring 90s. Uh, and then we had the tech bubble collapse from sort of 2000 to 2002. <clears throat> and and then since then, there's been a bit of a, a, a I guess, a liquid, uh, yeah, I guess, economic decline, really, since 2002. And then we had the subprime mortgage mortgage collapse in 2008, 2009, where it really, everything did grind to a halt. But since then, you can see it's, it's a terminal collapse. The, the US economy literally is falling down a mountain. It is literally, fall, it's like watching those people chase that, you know, that, roll of cheese in Bristol or whatever. And there are people are literally rolling down this hill. And when you're in a hill and you pick up so much pace, you really can't get out of that. That I mean, the only thing that stops you is, you know, hitting hard ground at the bottom or a wall or a tree. And we saw this in 2020. You can see here, M, uh, MV, money velocity, or technically currency velocity, just drops off a cliff, <laughs> drops off a cliff, drops off a cliff in 2020. And here's the thing. So uh, the way the way you can understand um, this MV thing, it's basically doing this on a quarterly basis. So it's showing us that in a like it, for every dollar in the U.S. economy, over a three month period, it's only tr it's only moving hands roughly one point, almost you know roughly one point two times. Okay, so it's barely moving. And the crazy thing is, is when it gets to one, it's game over. That is when you hit the tree. When you get one to, to one or below, no amount of stimulus will pick up MV. Because another way to look at it is, is I guess, uh, aggregate um, growth. So what this, when it goes below one, it's basically saying for every dollar that's in the economy, it's it's sucking out less than one dollar in, in GDP. So the more money you print, the worse your economy gets. So... So yeah, this, this chart is very similar to aggregate net growth um, and you've got to be very careful. So that is why they're printing like shitloads because they, they're hoping, they're hoping the more money they print, it's going to try and pick up MV here. Uh, and what this means is, that, that, uh, and there's th I guess there's three parties at play here. There's the government who are, or, uh, who are trying things. Also, I, when I say the government, I mean the central banks. There's central banks. You have then the commercial banks in the in between, and then us public. So they're trying to print money um, like a fire hydrant, uh, hoping, and it's all going into the banking sector, hoping that, that that money trickles down to the UK economy, or you know the the public. But it's not doing that because the commercial banks are just taking it. They're literally putting their mouth around that fire hydrant, and they're going to the Federal Reserve or Bank of England. Go on, turn it up. Give me everything you got. You can't have me. 
And and that's exactly what's happening. The commercial banks are just are just they're absorbing everything. So us lot are not you know, we're not seeing the you know, the effects of 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 the stimulus. Which is why it's inevitable. It is inevitable, and I've said this for years that we will have a UBI, a universal basic income, and that will be you know, it'll be something like three to five hundred pounds per month given to every adult in the UK, and it'll be the same in other countries. But even that on its own won't uptick MV. You have to time stamp it. So that money that will will be given will be like, hey, um, here's your five hundred pounds a month. But you can, but it's a use it or lose it policy. Within thirty days, it expires, and you can only spend it in these these retailers. Now you can't do that with the currency supply as it is because it's it's dumb cash. We have pound sterling, which is a dumb cash. You can't program it, which means this is another reason why we're going to end up in a completely cashless society. And what this means is that they're going to. Um, spit out Bitcoin, which is a central bank digital currency. Again, something which I predicted a couple of years back, and it's now happening. Um, <clears throat> so they're going to spit it out, and then during the next calamity, where we have a stock market crash or banks start failing, they're going to start bailing everyone out in Bitcoin, and then all of a sudden we're screwed. But again, there's other videos going through that. So there's, there's currency velocity, and this is real footage of Chairman Powell inside the Federal Reserve. Let's pause that video. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, th these are the two charts side by side. You've got MV crashing and you've got currency supply going off, you know, just going into orbit because they're trying to counteract MV. Again, just if you want to, if you want shits and giggles, go to usdebtclock.org and you'll see this national debt spiraling out of control. It's going up like a million dollars every 30 seconds. Um, it's just obscene. So <clears throat> yeah. This is the U US M2 currency supply, just but on trading view. And what I thought, I, I break it into uh, chunks because ten, twenty trillion dollars is hard to imagine. So what this means is, ba so I basically broke it up into five trillion dollar chunks. And so if you start over here on the left hand side, <clears throat> the US took roughly two hundred and twenty four years to put five trillion dollars on the planet. Two hundred and twenty four years. And then it took only 11 years to hit the next $5 trillion. And then it only took eight more years to hit another $5 trillion. So we're now up to $15 trillion here. And then it only took $2, trillion, uh, two years to get the next $5 trillion. Well, guess how long it's going to take to hit the next $5 trillion? Well, guess well, one year. We already know the answer. President Biden's already got his stimulus package approved. Um, so... It's going to be more than five trillion dollars within a year. Within a year from now, so and people think, oh, yeah, this, this, you know, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But when you when you calculate this, I mean, assuming a, like a really conservative fifteen percent CAGR, as in compound annual growth rate, for the next twenty years, that puts USM to sixty trillion dollars by twenty forty. It's obscene, and it's not just the US. It's the UK. It's every single country on the planet that has a central bank. That's the key thing here. Every single country that has a central bank is in the same boat. <clears throat> so we know with empirical data, we've got 2,400 years of very good financial records and data. And I'm a, I'm a student of monetary his, history. And like we know with almost certainty that M2 will continually to exponentially rise. <clears throat> This is going to make people poorer, roughly 15% per year. And this is the hurdle. This is I, not the risk-free hurdle. This is, I guess, a, a real-life monetary hurdle that you need to judge your investments on. So if you are someone that is not an investor, if you're not an investor and you're making 0% ROI per year, guess what? You are losing roughly 15% per year of your purchasing power, of your wealth, basically. And the reason the public as a whole don't understand this is because they look at their account and go, oh, look, I've got 10 grand's worth of savings. Next year, they look at their account. Oh, I've, I've still got 10 grand's worth of savings. Next year, five years later, oh, look, I've still got 10 grand's worth of savings. They don't get it. They still th they think they're not losing money, but they don't understand the purchasing power. I took one of the most 
graphically egregious photographs I've ever taken in my life um, the other week. It was so mind scorching. It was ridiculous. It was a picture of a Freddo chocolate bar being sold for 75 pence. This is worse than any porno video that you could ever watch. It's worse than two girls, one cup. <laughs> like this, like this picture of a Freddo being sold at 75 pence just made me like shudder inside. Um, like when I was a kid, a Freddo chocolate bar was 10 pence. So not only are Freddo's 75 P they're smaller than they used to be. Just fractionally smaller. Um, Chris, I mean, even Chris packets. I like, today I've just like plowed through this big, what was it? Tesco's finest salt and vinegar crisps. Um, now, I've almost finished it. I've, I've, I've had about half. But, like, I shit you not, you see this difference here from the silver to the green? It was only half full. I opened it. I was like, where the hell are my crisps? Uh, <laughs> it's like a joke. Um, again, I've got all sorts of assortments and chocolates here, which, again, are a lot smaller um, than they used to be. In fact, last night, I went through a pack of salt and vinegar walkers. These are a lot smaller and more expensive than they used to be. In fact, I'm not going to go through my whole bin. I've got four packets of Gillian chocolate trays here. <laughs> um, if you ever want to thank me, send me some Gillian chocolates. <laughs> or Bitcoin, I'll settle for either. Um, so yeah, you're, you're getting poorer if, you, if you're not investing. But here's the crazy thing. Let's say you want to, want to invest so you're, you're not lo losing your... your Wealth. Well, you need to make at least 15% per year just to break even. It's horrendous. Rising M2 will only continue to inflate Bitcoin. This is, this is awesome. So everyone thinks the government is against Bitcoin, and I guess it is. But, I mean, they must be aware of this. The more shenanigans and the, 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 the more that the governments and central banks try and play around with the economy, it's only going to inflate Bitcoin higher. The longer they dick around and print, 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 it's just increasing the, the, the eventual all-time high that Bitcoin will have. And I don't think there will be an all-time high. It's, it's going to be a continual thing. So when I say things like by 2030, I, I, I genuinely believe Bitcoin will be at least $10 million per Bitcoin. It sounds ridiculous, right? But I'm also, but the, the real-world purchasing value of that will be a, a, akin or the equivalent to a million dollar per Bitcoin. So although the US denominated value will be $10 million per Bitcoin by 2030, it will probably only buy you the amount of, say, a million dollars. And that's because M2 is just on a rampage. <clears throat> and by the way, like last year, check out my YouTube. Um, I made a video saying why Bitcoin is going to hit something like north 50k Bitcoin within a year. And at the time of that video, Bitcoin was like $5,000. And I got a lot of hate. I was like, it's never going to 10x within a year. Well, guess what? It, it peaked at, what, 62, 63. And we got a lot more. I still genuinely, in fact, I, I want to stay away from price for the moment. Therefore, Bitcoin is <clears throat> a wise move to insulate from insidious wealth erosion and make a large net wealth growth per year. So let's say you are Arj and Tina or, or Paula and Pablo. How at, or at right now, let, no, no, it's, it's, <laughs> ignore that. Let's say you are you. You are, I mean, I'm just reeling off the list here on the left. We've got, you are Rachel, Raymond, Deep, Chris, Cosmic Oracle, or Honey Debbie Baded. If that is a real name, Honey Debbie Baded, that is a cool name. Um, or Freddie. You are you. Let's say you're in the UK. You're, you're doing your thing. What can you do right now? Because if you haven't already you know, understood the, the, the punchline to this, this presentation. The punchline is that we are in mod, mod, like Argentina right now. Paul and Pablo didn't really understand what was going on. And it took 20 freaking years for them to figure out that, you know, their peso was getting dumped. So what do we do right now in the UK or the US or the Philippines or whoever, wherever you are right now? Well, let's go through each of these points. Borrow as much as you can in... GBP. I'm, I'm imagining everyone's here in the UK, by the way. And lever to the max. Forward finance as much as you can. Borrow an assets in GBP. Convert GBP into Bitcoin <clears throat> or crypto. 
when I say Bitcoin, I mean crypto, but stick to, you know, you, if you're going to do this, if, you, if you're doing this, in fact, it, let's say you're not in this for mad, mad, mad returns. You just want to protect yourself. Let's say you're, you're steady Eddie. You're not in this crypto malarkey. You just want to protect your wealth. Well, yeah, just do Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like that solid oil tanker or no, a solid aircraft carrier that can't be sunk. Um, and and everything else is like small speed speedboats. Bitcoin is that aircraft carrier, and then you need to store your Bitcoin offshore. So here's the thing: if you buy your Bitcoin, let's say you're doing this for the long term, don't buy it and then just leave it on Kraken, Coinbase, or Binance. Because guess what? <clears throat> Eventually, we have to expect the government to crack down big time on it, mm-hmm. and so there's nothing stopping them from going to these en- entities or these exchanges, and going, "Oi." hand over all, all the Bitcoin for these these users or, or whatever. I mean, it's, it sounds extreme, but President Roosevelt did it in 1932 and he banned private ownership of gold. Um, but here's the thing. If you ever try and, if a government ever tries to ban something, what does the price do? The price rockets. What happened in the US when they banned alcohol? It went through the roof. What happened in the in 1930s and 40s when the US banned private ownership of gold? Those that went, screw you, government, and kept it, gold went through the roof. Um so if they did ever ban Bitcoin, you'd be an idiot to hand over your Bitcoin. So you've got to store it in your own wallet, which is the equivalent of storing your dollars offshore. And here's the other thing that's going to screw people over in the future. And you heard it here first. In fact, I said it a few years ago. Um, at some point, the, the banks will go, oh, if we can't join them, we'll, we'll, if we can't beat them, we'll join them. And you, I wouldn't be surprised if you know Barclays Bank one day puts out an advert and say, hey, Buy, buy Bitcoin through Barclays and your online banking. And you can store it in our special Barclays wallet. You will have to be the biggest moron on the planet if you buy Bitcoin from your you know, Barclays and then store it in your own bank. Like you're asking for ass whooping. So Bitcoin is the only financial Noah's Ark out there. It's the ultimate hedge against uncertainty. And this chart is there for shits and giggles. This is showing you how badly the US dollar is doing against Bitcoin. It is crashing at a a calamitous rate. And so I want to get back to this point here. You know, I I really want to talk about, yeah, but it will never get to that that bad here. And I I recently had a a Facebook conversation with someone about crypto and like he sort of just dismissed it. He was like, yeah, yeah, I get that. I I know all about this currency dilution thing, but, 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 but. And again, I, I just have to re- reiterate that it's like talking to someone on the Titanic that refuses to understand that the, the Titanic is about to, to crash. So I want to do um, <clears throat> a little doodle. Well, it's not really a doodle. I just wanted to, again, w- one more, one last time. I just want to drive it home one last time. Let's say you are Mr. and Mrs. Smith, a typical UK family. So... Um, I don't know, just draw some draw some stick people. And let's say you are let's just assume that you are this couple. Okay? And you're doing really well. You're absolutely knocking it out of out of the park. You're you're proper, you know, middle class. You're you're both earning well. Uh, and let's say your income is a uh, hundred grand a year. Okay. In the UK, if you're earning a hundred grand a year, you're considered a Billy Big Ball. Um, <clears throat> now, you probably got two kids as well, but they're ir- irrelevant um, for this example. Obviously, kids are not irrelevant. They are the future. They are little mini supercomputers that the world is trying to kneecap. Um, so you're only 100 grand. Now, let's just look at some costs. So you most likely bought your house. You're paying off a mortgage. Let's say, um, <clears throat> and first of all, if you're earning 100 grand gross, we, we really need to see... Um, what you so UK salary calculator? I'm guessing you're only going to be taking home like 60k, 100k in calculate. So yearly, yeah, you're 66 take home. So 66. Let's just bend, yeah, let's call it 67. So you're taking home 67k, okay. Now, after school fees and stuff like that, um, I'm, I'm going to save you the math. 
like most people will, will probably str- struggle, even a couple. I mean, it all, it all depends on, you know, how, how big a high life they're living. They could have a two very expensive cars on finance, all that sort of stuff. And so, I mean, I know a, a barrister who's on sort of 160K a year, but he's losing money every year because his outgoings are roughly 160K a year. So it, it depends on, you, you know, how lavish the lifestyle is. But I've done like a, a bit of a survey in the past and, you know, roughly to the thumb, a prudent family, yada, yada, yada. Um, they're only saving roughly six grand a year. So something like 500 quid a month in savings. That's, that's six grand. OK, now, by the way, this this income could be from a job. It could be from a business. It could be from property portfolio uh, rentals or, or whatever. But you're only saving six grand a year. So this is how over a 20 year period, this very successful couple can get absolutely rinsed, because even if they're I mean, the salary will increase, you know, let's say over a 20 year period by, you know, probably be 120 K. You know, it doesn't go up that much salaries, especially rental income. Like, for example, my rent is three grand a month, but you know, it's locked in during the term of that term of that um, of, of the contract. And so every year there's no uptick unless at the end of the contract we, we, we have another rental room and then all of a sudden the, the rent jumps up. That can and does happen. But long story short, income just, just doesn't really go up that fast. And when you look at any chart of income to debt, income to uh, house prices, income to stock prices, income to whatever, Income is always the, the slow mover here. But let's say you do no investing. Well, in fact, let's say you just do your typical investing. Like most, you know, this, this family's probably got a financial advisor, put them into um, low cost trackers and a diversified portfolio and whatnot. Then they're, get, they're going to be making bugger all money. They're going to be making like next to nothing. Like they'll be lucky to make like a 3% yield. And so let's say the, you know, the world is diluting the currency supply at you know, 15% per year. Well, you're making a net loss of 12% per year. And that will compound over time, except the compounding interest will work against you. And your net wealth will be like this over time. Over a 20-year period, it's going to look horrendous. And not to, and not to mention the real-world costs of everything, food, groceries, um, petrol, house prices, education, all of that stuff is going up. So any savings that you did have that, you know, that six grand a year times 20, it's not going to buy you a Starbucks coffee in 20 years time. Now, let's let's look at the, the, the fund aspect. So everyone everyone's obsessed with, you know, getting into low cost tracker funds and, and, and uh, you know, <clears throat> having a diversified portfolio. Well, let's have a look at, you know, everyone talks about, you know, like owning the world. So if you look at um, a typical, you know, own the world fund where it, it buys everything, stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, etc. There is a massive inherent flaw with these funds. Um, and I've mentioned this in the past about owning the world. It's all very good in theory, but in, in reality, it doesn't work unless you're holding on to something for 50 plus years. So if you look at this random <clears throat> fund, so what is this? Um, this is a, an own the world type fund. Let's look at the chart performance. Any time today. How ironic. I've got two internets and they're still so slow. Come on. There we go. Let's have a look at this chart. So I'm going to zoom in here a bit. Control plus. There we go. Repixelate a bit. So look at this. This fund um, was created in late 2017. And what has it done? It's done nothing but go down for the entirety of its life, pretty much. And in, in recent times, it's had a bit of a rally. Now, let's compare that. So this is a UK-based one. Let's just open up TradingView and open up the FTSE. No, in fact, screw TradingView. That's a shit system. I'm going to open up my chart. It's better. Um, come on. Checking for, oh my God, okay. I'll do whatever's faster. Let's see. UK 100, does that pop up? Yeah, it does. Screw it. we we'll use this chart. So what has the, 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 the FTSE done since the March crash in um, 2020? Let's go to the weekly chart. 
This is why I don't like trading view. It doesn't always give you the best shizzle. Nah. No, it's going to take a while. Long story short, the, the footsie has gone nuts, okay? It's, it's, it's gone pretty... Let's try footsie if I type in footsie 100. No. Ah, damn it. The annoying thing is I prepared everything. Prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. I prepared everything. Okay, this is a better one. Here we go. So here in March 2020, we had the, the crash, the footsie. And then it's, you know, it's rallied massively. Well, not not massively. It's back to where we were just before the, the, the COVID crash. Um, and... When you compare that to, say, you know, the, the S&P 500, the S&P 500 has gone absolutely, like, helter-skelter. So that was the b m March COVID crash, boom, and then it's done this massive sort of um, <clears throat> completely artif artificially pumped market. And, and that's the, the main reason there is that the Federal Reserve is printing way, 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 way more than the Bank of England. But when you look at these, these own the world funds, look what, what's happened. It's now at best two percent up over the last five percent uh, five years. So I can't do the maths, but what is that? Two divided by five. Two divided by five is 0.4 percent per year. Now I'm going to ignore all the fees. Let's just say it was the best fund in the world because it was free and it didn't cost a thing. Well, your gross yield, or yeah, your your net yield in that case is 0.4 percent per year, and it's never going to work. Like, and so this, you know, funds like this um, are just going to screw over the public over the long term. And you have to understand when you're looking at distributions of stuff, anything, there's always a Gaussian distribution. So when you look at the world's um, wealth, it's going to be like this. Most people are going to be average in terms of wealth. You're then going to have a whole bunch of people which are poor. I call them average and then rich. Well, you have to freaking do the exact opposite of anyone in these sectors if you act, if you care about your finances. So you have to completely ignore what they think. Ignore what as in what the common thinking is. What's what's the common actions or, you know, actions and whatever and the common whatever whatever this this sector thinks in finance, you need to do the opposite. So you have to sort of focus on, okay, what do the rich do? What do, do the rich think? How do they move? And then emulate that. Or what do the rich do? They don't, they, <laughs> they certainly don't dump all their money in a low cost tracker fund. Um, as much as Warren Buffett and Ray Dalio likes to tell you, that's because a lot of the, the a lot of that mantra out there is propagated from fund managers themselves. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, they don't dick around in mutual funds, do they? Um, so the point I'm just trying to take is that if you are the, you know, a middle class family right now earning well, or even earning less, doesn't matter if you're not making more than 15% per year, you're losing money. Right. Let's get back to this. So very quickly for those of you who are brand new with crypto and you're thinking, ah, oh, just shut up, take my money. Um, one, I don't ever take your money. Uh, the easiest thing you can do is send your money to GBP, uh, or send your GBP to Coinbase, Kraken, or um, Binance. Um, and for this example, I quickly sent 100 quid. Uh, I did this like 20 minutes before the presentation. So you literally bank transfer it in. Then you click buy or sell. And then, yeah, you literally buy whatever you want. So you click buy or sell, comes up with that. You put in, you know, how much you want to buy, 100 Click it, shows you how much Ether you then got, because I clicked Ether, and then click buy. Boom. And then you got Ether. Now, I don't use Coinbase for my chunky pur um, purchases because their fees are through the roof. It's like 2 to 3%. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And step three, go to YouTube, search for Simon Kid, find the crypto playlist, learn way more. And again, I do this on most streams, but I'm just going to show you. Um, what am I doing? F type in Siam Kid. Ignore all the Age of Empire videos I watch. Uh, click my face or my name. Go to playlists. And in the playlist, there's going to be some sort of crypto playlist here somewhere. Boom. 
And there's over 80 odd videos in this <clears throat> in this in this playlist. All the recent ones are at the bottom. Uh, the recording of this one is going to be right down here. Um, but if you scroll up a little bit, watch this one: Crypto Tutorial for Absolute Beginners 2021. There we go. Watch that one, and it goes through everything. So, um, just to finish it off, yeah, that's it. Now I'm not going to do the other stuff because that's for somebody else. Um, but, 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 but that I think is it. That is, I know I've really drummed in the point over the last hour or so, but I, I, I'm just going to use this video to just control C, control V to anyone that doesn't get this in the future. And please feel free to do the same uh, when it's done. And by the way, I have to thank all of you here. Um, there's 188 of you here. So that, yeah, wow. So thank you. Much appreciated. So, so now I'm going to start. Um, going through the questions um now i'm now i'm properly looking at the questions right jesus um i'm scrolling through this and there's a lot of questions now i don't want to be here for two hours and i'm sure most of you don't want to be so i'm going to give pretty quick answers um ah but before that okay before that i have to do one other thing so i've been messaging a friend who and by the way, the, the question um, that I had is something along the lines of, "Hey, Simon, blah blah blah, had a windfall, inheritance, sold a business, sold a property, whatever." Um, and in this particular case, this friend uh, now has one hundred twenty thousand pounds sat in cash, and is planning to do fifty fifty gold and crypto. And I, I promised her that I'd give her my thoughts on this potential, you know, yeah, of this split, I guess. So. Um, so first of all, well done. You, you got well done. Yeah. Having 120 K in cash is good. Um, you now know if you sit on it and do nothing, you're going to lose that over 20 years. Um, <clears throat> but in terms of, first of all, I want to talk about gold. Um, I am becoming less of a fan of gold and silver over the years. I became, I was a bullion dealer like 10, something like 10 years ago. And, and the reason I became a bullion dealer is because I wanted as much cheap gold and silver as possible. And I and I got loads of silver, and I've been selling my silver as fast as I can. But the thing is, I haven't even sold half of my silver. Um, I've still got probably just over half of my silver left, and it's really hard to sell. Uh, and the reason being is that there is not much of a secondary market with gold and silver. Now the silver I have managed to sell, I've made you know like three hundred and fifty percent, which you know conventional ROI that's really good. Compared to crypto, it's a bag of balls. Um, so I do want to sell more of my silver. <laughs> if anyone wants to buy my silver, I know a lot of people do do like it. But when I see people buying gold and silver, they're not buying the physical coins; they're just putting it in like a vault. Now it's, it's a bit like storing your crypto on the exchange. If you can't hold it, you don't own it. And like I remember someone, I think somewhere on Facebook, someone said, oh, yeah, buy, buy gold and store it in Shanghai. Um, you know, like a, whoopsie, uh, store it in some sort of exchange. Um, and I'm thinking like, oh, man, where do I start? I've got, I've got too many things to say about gold and silver. It's been a big chunk of my life. Um, long story short, I'm not going to bother. It's just uh, like when you weigh up bullion. Is that three hours? <laughs> bullion against crypto. Just call it crypto, CFX, cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, crypto wins. Like pretty much on every asset, it's easier to sell. You don't get slipped on the price. You don't like. It's easier to store. It's just, it's way more liquid. It's a it's a booming market, whereas gold and silver is is a highly suppressed market. So my my personal opinion is probably don't. And this goes against everything I've probably said for for many years. I've been a massive gold and silver fan, but now I think is the time to sell it. Although I'm not. I'm, by the way, although I do believe gold and silver have you know great movements in them. Um, if you're to just pick up gold and silver, his gold. But <clears throat> although in the future, when a country like backs their current, like China, if, if 
China were to back their currency supply by with gold, or even like ten percent of their currency supply, we'll see something stupid like fifty thousand dollar gold, and it's sat below two thousand dollars at the moment. But that's going to be a while, and it's it is a big if. So, yeah, and I mean, we're, gold has just been falling since twenty twenty. So, yeah, I just personally wouldn't bother. So, if here's the other thing with crypto. Anything you put into crypto, you need to be able to leave it there for a few years. Do not do what I did um, years ago, like with, with the first rally. I basically put everything, every single penny I had in, in crypto. And then I overexposed myself to the point where all, I left my businesses dry. And so I needed um, you know, cash flow for my businesses. And I had to start selling the crypto. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's not good. So try... Like whatever crypto, whatever funds you can park for at least three years. So whatever money you can afford to park for at least three years, don't touch it. Don't be tempted to touch it. Then, then do that. So, but going back to this, this, uh, my friend's situation where she's got 120k and she wants gold and silver uh, and and uh, crypto. I personally, um. I would spend, you know, put 10 grand in trying to get a business set up. I mean, setting up a business doesn't actually cost that much money. I mean, all of that that 10 grand will be really for, for marketing. It'll probably cost you a grand to set up a business and then use nine grand in marketing just to get the proof of concept going. But then I put the, the, the 110K uh, into the Kryptonian portfolio. Again, if you go to that YouTube playlist, there is a... Um, an example of what the Kryptonian portfolio is, but basically, you basically you, you buy the you know the top bunch of coins of every sector. So you can go to a, a website like Mazari.io. So let's open up Mazari. Come on, here we go. Yeah, so on Mazari, if you go to the right hand side where it says sector, you you can simply click that and it will alphabetize the sector. And then you can go through all of the different sectors that you want. So, um, like for wallets, you buy and, and buy. Oh, I wouldn't actually buy that. There's not many uh, ethos. Okay, here we go. So buy the, the 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 top one, two, or three coins of each sector. So here we go: virtual reality and augmented reality. What are the big boys here? There's Decentraland and Moss Coin. Moss Coin is actually forty-seven million dollars. It's quite low. So yeah, Decentraland for sure, 1.55 billion. And then simply go through this list, buying all of the, you know, the, the, the big boys. And then you'll have a, a portfolio of, you know, everything. You are your own tracker fund. Um, and you can get all sexy with it. Like personally, I've got something like educated punts. Half of it is in my what I call smart tracker, as in that Kryptonian portfolio of buying everything. So I've got smart punts i've got that tracker my own tracker fund so to speak um then i've got uh oh i can't remember oh i cannot remember what have i done my personal portfolio is always evolving by the way so what i show you now um is going to be different in in a few months time so yeah, I've got, well actually, yeah, so I've got 60% of my chunk right now in, in solid plays, what I believe solid, solid smart tracker, and then normal smart tracker. So I won't go into too much detail on, on that, but I just, the reason being, I don't want to say, hey, buy this coin, because you'll, you'll listen to this, and then you won't have the updates that my students get when, where I sell it. Like, in fact, on, in fact, I'm going to give you a real example here. On my Facebook Oh, it's going to be too too long. So someone basically was having a go. I was talking about, you know, I was, um, this, this stream, I think, the other day. And someone said, I, don't, I think they've deleted their own comment. I can't remember. Yeah. So Greg said, oh, what, like the all-in move in Neo back in 2017. Um, and that that's the thing. When, when you're following people loosely... So I made a lot of money with Neo back in 2017. <clears throat> and obviously this Greg person probably heard me talk about Neo, but then evidently have my student update. So they he didn't know when I got out of Neo or gas. I made a lot like and as I said here, um like ignoring 
Yeah. So ignoring the gas trade, ignoring the gas trade, the one we're doing that is short sighted. It's still a mega trade. I jumped back into gas in January at one dollar twenty eight, and even right now it's ten dollars. Um, this is the problem with the internet. Someone may hear me talk about one trade and not hear the dozens of moves and updates after that, and so that person won't have any context. The first gas trade I did was to double my neo holdings. It did that within three months, and I made this infographic. So, and I think. Yeah, so step one, context is everything. Step two, uh, good traders focus on R multiple, not win rate. So most good traders have a 35 to 50% win rate. But here's the key thing, this, this third point down here. Assuming you're following a profitable trader with a 40% win rate, if you loosely copy them, you may copy a couple of winners, but then after two losing trades, you may get think, hmm, Simon is an idiot. I'm not going to copy him anymore. I think I'll give it a rest. <clears throat> you then may miss out on the next two stonking trades, and then think, ah, balls, will start to follow again, only for the next couple of trades to lose. This happens all of the time. So the trader ends up being profitable, but because you've been selective, uh, you've ended up with a worse win rate and, and negative profit. I see this happening all the time. So th this is why my most hated question is, hey, hey Simon, what coins, what coins shall I buy now? And I, I hate it because I'll say something like ADA, you know, buy Cardano or Solana, um, and then... It'll boom and then it'll crash like everything does. And then in four years' time, three years' time, you're going to come back at me and go, hey, you, you, you lost all my money. And it's because you got zero accountability. So um, what was it? I completely forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. So <clears throat> have a look at that Kryptonian portfolio video. But yeah, going, uh, what was I saying? Going back to... Uh, where is it? Lost it. Lost it. Here we go. No. Okay. It's down here. Here we go. So, yeah. Um, so for the person who I'm answering this question, uh, I won't say her name. Um, I would basically really try and get into your own business. Um, and then if that business works, then then you'll, you'll have more money to, to grow that. And I cannot stress how important the, the symbiotic relationship between business and investing is. Um, and then put your 110K into the Kryptonian portfolio, basically become your own tracker fund. And then obviously, yeah, spend more time and learn crypto more. So then you'll know what, you know, a solid punt may be. Right. Now let's look at the questions. I'm going to have to scroll right to the very beginning and I'm going to have to be quick. So what do we, okay. Will Benga. Hi, Simon. Hey mate. Um, I remember you once saying sometimes sell a crypto at a loss and then rebuy immediately to lock in the loss and reduce your tax liability for the year. I think I've got that right. How does this relate to the bed and breakfast rule? I thought you couldn't re-enter straight away. Yeah. The bed and breakfast rule. There's a 30 day uh, window. Um, so yeah, you can't get back in for, for 30 days. So if, so this is what I call a sidestep. So a sidestep is where you have a falling market mark and you think, oh my God, it's falling. And you think, right, it's going to drop again. So you jump out. So you, I don't know, let's be more specific. So you exit here, waiting for it to drop. It drops, it then consolidates. You probably then buy back in. And so with the same money, so you end up with more tokens. But then if you think it's going to drop again, guess what? You then sell again. It drops. And then when you think it's near the bottom, you then buy back in. And so eventually when the market comes back up, you'll have more tokens than you originally did. You've got to be careful with that last exit. Sometimes you'll exit and then it'll leave you. Um, that happened with me for a few of the coins recently. So that's a sidestep. Now, if it's like a top of the market drop, okay, so let's say... Um, I don't know, let's say you're looking at a particular um, crash and you're looking at all sorts of different on-chain and that. By the way, some of the on-chain charts will show you, I mean, there's there's lots of top and bottoming type indicators out there. But for example, if we just go to my dashboard, let's have a look, Simon's top and bottom alerts. Let's look at this one, for example, the SSR oscillator. So the SSR oscillator is actually a really good one for bottoms. Whenever you see this oscillator hit rock, rock bottoms after, after a sustained crash, 
this is a good idea of, of a potential bottom, just like we've seen recently. So we've seen um, this oscillator crash, hit rock bottom, just as we hit that $30,000 level for the first time, it then started ticking up, which is a good sign that, you know, okay, things are going back up. And by the time you see the uptick, price is normally around the same. And then this is a good bottom in indicator. So this, you know, you can use all sorts of different indicators to show you when the bottom or, or the top is. I mean, again, I've got different indicators for the, for the tops and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, so that's that. But going back to the tax thing, yeah. So you exit and wait for 30 days and you'll be fine. Or you can do something slightly different. Um, and I would always get approval from your accountant before you do anything like this, where, <clears throat> um, so you, blah, 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 you exit. Oh, no. So you crashes, you exit, and you try and. Um, utilize on the on the cash oh, sorry on the on the tax loss so to speak so offsets your profits if you've got got any and what I then did is I took that profit or that I exercised a loss and then I took that money and, and sent it over to a limited company now with this particular limited company I had I, I sort of killed a couple of birds with one stone because I had an ODLA so I had an overdrawn director's loan account on that company um, it also had losses so um, with businesses, you have retained losses, losses and retained profits. So I had retained losses. And it's always, if you ever have a, a bunch of businesses, it's always really, 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 really freaking handy having at least one business that has shitloads of retained losses. Uh, because that way, in the future, when, you, when that business turns around and you start cracking out loads of profits, you, you, you'll then have all of those retained losses as effectively tax-free uh, income. So what I then did is I part, I took that, that funds. So I utilized the, the tax write off for, for me personally. I then sent that money over to the limited company that helped the, the ODLA and it's got loads of profits, lo retained losses. So I then bought back into the same crypto, same, roughly the same amount of crypto. So when crypto eventually does this, I've got X amount of pro you know, money, which is, is going to be completely tax free. So Again, before you do any of this sort of financial engineering, chat with your own accountant because um, some of this gets a bit complex. Right, next question. Oh, here's the other thing. And I want to talk about the differences between a sidestep and a spiky fade. So sidestep, as I just explained, is in a bear market where the market's going down and you try and exit in and out, in and out, hoping to, you know, uh, get more tokens as you go along. In a bull market, you use the same sort of method, but the other way up. So it, I call it the spiky fade. So spiky fade. A trading term, so a fade in, in trading means you're basically going against a particular move. So when the market does this and goes, wee, and it's overextended, you sell up here and then you put in a, an entry buy order in, um, you know, roughly halfway down or wherever, you know, the, the, the support is. So when the market comes back down and you rebuy back in, you've got, guess what? More tokens. That's great. Now, I have to do a massive shout out because I'm a big fan of spiky fades and side steps. Um, and let's find it. In fact, I won't say his name because it probably is probably a private thing. Um, so first of all, I'll show you an example of like here we go. So I texted this out yesterday, fifteenth of August. I was like, "Yay, my Fizz entry buy finally filled at two dollars and two cents." So what was that? So I was in Fizz again. It's part of my tracker. As you can see on my list, I own freaking everything here. Um, so Fizz went ballistic. So if we go to the daily chart, Fizz hit rock bottom and they went wee all the way up here. So I then sold Fizz way up here. I can't remember, around $3, I think, something like that. And I set an entry buy order back down here at $2.02. And, .02. and guess what happened? The market went all the way back down, put me in, and I'm now back in. And so I've got way more tokens than I originally did. Now, by the way, this can work against you sometimes because my true order, my TRO, has not filled. So I sold somewhere around here, put an entry order at 42 cents, and the market came back, almost filling me in, 
by I was literally three cents off. God's sake. And then the market buggered off. However, I'm still confident we're going to start crashing again. So that's one. But one guy, and I'm just going to wait. I'll just open this over here. I'm going to, uh, if I do. Okay. I, I'm, I don't want to show his name. So I'm going to read it. Okay. Oh, no. I'll take a little screenshot of that without his name. So this is one of my trading students. This is literally this weekend. He said, today has been the craziest day in crypto to date. My, the crypto gods have smiled on me, thanks in part to my six-month-old. He had me up at 5 a.m. and what else to do but check crypto. I noticed UTK had jumped 50%, so I sold my position. It then immediately dumped back down to 34 cents, so I bought back in. Only for that to raise to 50 cents again, so I sold again and it dropped to 40 cents, where I bought back in. It's now just shot up over 100% to 65 cents. Again, I've sold and we'll see what happens. Started off with 62,000 UTK, bought 20k is worth on Wednesday this week, and ended up with 135,000 UTK at, at the time of last sale. All told, I've made over $70,000 profit on this move, one move today. I'll buy back in when it drops again, but certainly going to bag some profits in this one. Finally, a trade has massively gone in my favor and I can't stop smiling. Time for a beer. So, I mean, that's absolutely epic and I'm, I'm, I'm super chuffed for him. And, and what technique was he using? He was using the spiky fade. Um, it is, it's a beautiful system. Just curious. I want to look at what XTK is doing. So, yeah. It's, um, I don't know if he's got filled back in yet, but yeah. It's very similar to my Fizz trade. So a lot of the micro caps are doing this. Like I think Dent did the same thing the other day. Um, yeah, they're all doing the same shizzle. So, yeah, right. Let's go back to the questions. Da, 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 da. Okay, right. Um, Robbie said, which platform did you use to lend? I use Aave. James says, what happens when gold becomes tokenized in the markets? Yeah, James, it was a really good question. When when gold is tokenized, it will actually, it will actually help gold itself. Um, because in order to buy a tokenized version of gold or a tokenized version of a stock, you have to um, you have to buy the underlying asset or or the, the person selling the tokenized version has to buy the underlying asset. So if people buy start buying tokenized gold, it means someone's going to have to buy a big chunk of gold and put it in a, you know, uh, a vault somewhere to then sell the tokenized gold. So, yeah, it's going to help. Um, let's go through the questions. So I am scrolling through. Um, hopefully... Adam said, in terms of payment settlement, asset exchange, and remittance, I take you eventually came round to Ripple then. No, I haven't. Ripple is a shitcoin. Moving on. Um, oh, yeah, Steve, also, this affected me when Fredo bars became 50p. That's how screwed we are. Yeah. <laughs> uh, titanium black, just like Lebanon now versus US dollar. Yeah, I, I looked at that the other day. So, um, yeah, Lebanon's having the same issue. However, it's not as bad as Argentina. So I think it's called the Lebanese pound, the Lebanon pound, LBP, I think is a thing. Lebanese pound. Um, let's look at it against the dollar. So, yeah, it's a bit hard to see. Uh, let's look at it from, hopefully there's a, a longer picture than this. No, LBP against USD. I want to find a like a twenty-year chart of the Lebanese pound uh, history. LBP. Damn it, ten years. Not going to show us. Oh well. 
But yeah, I, I do hear Lebanon's having a, a bit of a, a, a tough time at the moment. But from looking at the charts at the moment, it doesn't seem too bad. It's not like freaking Argentina. Like when you compare pretty much anyone to Argentina right now, Argentina's screwed. So Argentina against US dollar. Um, there we go. That's the Argentinian peso there. Or if you do it the other way around, USD, ARS. There we go. The Argentine uh, peso is just, yeah, hello hyperinflation at some point. It's not even there yet. This is this is not even hyperinflation. This is just like having a little rally up. <laughs> right. Uh, I see a lot of Steve Woody raids here. Oh, oh hello. Um, yeah, Rachel, spot on. And the general public thinks they're in paradise because they've been given free cash stimulus checks. They're blinded, yes, because they're just going to spend it. They're not going to invest it. So it's just, no matter, I mean, you could pay everyone two grand a month, then people, the same outcome will happen. Will happen. Um, they'll just blow it. They won't invest it or grow it. Um, that UBI will come with strings attached as well. Yep, I, I, I completely agree. Don't follow what the powers that we say you won't get it here. Um, right. Peanut butter jelly time. Sime, the more we are dependent on the government via UBI, how will future generations be able to own businesses in a free market again? So the... I mean, they've been doing studies of UBI for, for the last 20 odd years and all over the world, there've been, you know, UBI experiments. And what they found is that economic output goes up with the UBI because it enables people to sort of work on bigger, bigger projects or, you know, to, to do things that they, you know, whether they want to pursue their hobbies a bit more, but they're, they're less stressed out. Um, so, but it actually makes things easier. If you have a UBI and, you know, three, even if it's 300 quid a month, it pays your food. So there's one less worry. So you, ha you then have more money to set up a business or, or do other stuff. So don't get me wrong. I've been very doom and gloomy. I'm massively bullish, massively bullish on the future. Simply because we have like 10 different technologies about to enter exponential growth. Um, and although the monetary world is going to be a bag of balls and we're, we're going to be cash as society, a world of negative interest rates, which is, I mean, I, I need a whole presentation just on that itself. That is another Titanic type um, ex explanation needed. But yeah, the, the future is prosperous. It really is. <clears throat> Erland Thu, um, can you make a video on how to use your crypto as collateral and buy more crypto with crypto? Um yeah, I've, it's in that playlist. I may, I'll probably have to do it again um, to make it more concise, so it's not amongst other stuff. But yeah, okay. Tom, in the last free Q and A, you suggested Bitcoin should drop, and we're out. Then your latest creation said it would drop circa thirty five k, but we're back in. So what's happening? Bullish, bearish. Yeah, I'm. I'm in. I, I went. I've been in for a while, which is good. Um, well, I say a while. I've been in a couple of weeks. So let's look at Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I think I got in around 40, something like that. I did expect to move back down to, um, 35 ish, but what we had was, if I just get to the daily chart, we had the move down to 37 and a bit. So it's this pullback here. I thought this pullback would go down to 36, 35, but it didn't. Um, it, it, it just bounced. And then... <clears throat> Once we saw that, and especially once I saw that low test, I mean, look at that. That's a beautiful low test. I was back in. So, yeah, I've, I've been back in um, for, for a couple of weeks, I think, and, and everything else. <clears throat> so, I, I, I'm fully back in the market. And it's great because what's happening, I'm looking at my portfolio and my Bitcoin valuation is going up. And that's simply because everything against Bitcoin is also going up. So if you just take ADA, ADA against Bitcoin, boom. So we've had that squeeze, it's, it's now pumping up. So yeah, ADA against, you know, the dollar's going up. But if we look at like Solana, I'm in Solana right now and I love Solana. And just look at that bad boy. So we have this compression, it's broken to the upside. Again, ag against the dollar. See, I, I saw the squeeze and I thought it would probably squeeze a little bit longer before the breakout. But hey, we had the breakout and look what it's doing right now. It's absolutely booming. 
So, and that looks like, a, I mean, to me, every bone in my body wants to do a spiky fade on this one. <laughs> so, yeah, and there's a few others that are getting ready to, to pop. Anyway, uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, next, next questions. Yeah, I'm all in. Um, and when you're looking at the on-chain analysis, everything is bullish. Everything is bullish. And I'm not going to turn this into an on-chain update because this will take 20-odd 20, 20 minutes. But um, what could... Any handy ones that I could show you? Mm, maybe. So where are the questions gone? I, so I'm just going through them one by one in chronological order. David Pickup, hey Sam, are you still predicting Cardano getting to $5 by Christmas? Yes, I am. Yeah, probably a lot higher than that. Um, Mehul or Mehul, uh, Simon the Pastor talked about the ratio play on DOT, which, you're like, yeah, my DOT Ether trade. Um, I'll get back into Ether when the ratio is a bit higher. At the moment, I got in a bit too soon. So to be honest, I got in this DOT Ether trade probably a month too soon but yeah so what's happened is dot against ETH ethereum is absolutely undervalued right now massively undervalued so <clears throat> about a month ago i got in probably around the same area um so it's recovered a, a, a bit but i got in i think in july but what's happening right now on dot against ethereum is guess what that is it's inverted head and shoulders so we have shoulder head, shoulder, bum line, punch through. So yeah, when this gets back up to sort of at least this level, the, the 0 0.016 level, that's when I'm, I'll take that chunk of ether and put it back into ether. But yeah, dot is, uh, where is dot, 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 dot. Yeah, starting to move. Again, dot against bitcoins, that same sort of pattern, that inverted head and shoulders along with the double bottom here. Um, and dot against the dollar, that's still doing it. I, I really don't give a shit about the dollar because... You only care about the dollar denomination when you're going to sell, but I'm not going to be selling anytime soon. So for me, this is an accumulation of Bitcoin. I want to get as much, I guess, Bitcoin valuation as possible because I believe in bit or stock to flow, although I think we're going to have lengthening cycles. But um, in fact, I'll show you one chart. So stock to flow is still on track. Um, if we go from let's say top top from top, so yeah, stock to flow is still on track, and we're we're looking to hit you know ar around this level by the by December. But one thing we are seeing across the board, and I'll I'll be very quick with this, is that when you look at um. Like these, so Bitcoin since the last halving, Bitcoin since cycle low, Bitcoin since market top. We're definitely seeing lengthening cycles and diminishing returns. So that's that's one thing for sure. So if you look at the the Bitcoin days since halving, so you have the first epoch, i.e. the first you know halving cycle, um, this blue one. Then you have the high, then you have the second one high, then the third. And so if you were to just draw, um, I don't know how to draw on this because it's not on Zoom. How do I draw? Um, I want a little doodle. Um, no. Oh, well, you just got to follow my mouse. Um, so we're looking at basically some sort of little curve where we'll most likely get sort of a, a, a high around here. So it's slightly later than probably normal. So maybe later than December. but And it's roughly a 10x multiple from the previous halving. Well, the 10x multiple from the previous halving was about $8,000, $9,000. So that's indicating a $90,000 sort of high. If you were to look at it from price since uh, the cycle low, um, the low, where is it? So where's the peak? I can't remember. There we are now. There's the other one. So this one doesn't really give us much. Um, yeah, this is inconclusive. But from since Markle, Markle? since market top, um, we can see what's happening here. We're seeing, again, a, a eventual sort of rally, or sort of slight decline around here. Again, another lengthening cycle, but it's still around the 10 times of the, since the top. Well, the, the, the previous top was like 20K. So 10 times 20K is 200K. 
Um, <clears throat> I'm, yeah, so by December, I'm expecting anywhere between 100 to 150K. Um, and there, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of reasons why. Um, but if we just look at the two things, the, the logarithmic regression band, if I just do this, get to the weekly chart, go to the logarithmic prices. Let's add in an indicator, which will be a logarithmic regression band. One. Whoa, what's going on here? Didn't want that. I wanted that. There we go. So as you can see, the big black lines here are the halvings. And Bitcoin is fractal. It really is. So we are in the middle of a, a bull market, and it's emulating very much what the the second epoch did, uh, where we had um, a fake all time, a fake high followed by the proper high. So this is the fake high. We had a bit of a tumble. Now uh, the second high. So what we're looking to see is that the um, again, I, I don't think we'll go too far into the red zone, but looking at this by January, uh, sorry December time. Uh, December, 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 around here. So we're looking, I mean, the bottom of this line is around $124,000 and sort of midway up-ish, low-ish is about one hundred and fifty. So I'm being conservative. I, I really do think we'll see 100 to 150K Bitcoin by end of this year. But then when we look at ooh, moving average, moving average chart, yeah, let's leave that. I won't explain all of this, but long story short, um, green line catches the tops, bo bottom line catches all the bottoms. What's the top line doing at the moment? If we were to zoom in a bit, top line is hovering at about 167K. Um, and that sort of correlates with a whole bunch of other charts, which well, I'm not going to go into because on-chain analysis covers a lot. Um, and so, um, but yeah, it's a, Oh, so much to tell. I literally did a half an hour on-chain update for my students this morning. And long story, I'm just going to cut to the mustard. Long story short, full on bull for the moment. For the for the short and medium term, it's upwards um, for sure. Right, let's go through the questions again. Is ADA overextended? I uh, Let's have a look at ADA. Yeah, it is overextended. Um, however, I'm not going to fade it. I mean, it's, it's opening up for smart contracts very soon. So... I'm just, you've got to be careful in, in very strong surge markets like this, fading a big big project like this or Solana, is, is, you could be left for, left for dead. But there's one way you could do a sidestep. Um, like for example, if you sidestep this into Tether or USDC and, um, <clears throat> and then the market buggered off, you'll be sat in Tether and everything else goes up. So you then be losing not only your wealth in terms of ADA, but you'll be then losing wealth in terms of Bitcoin as well. So a softer way to do a sidestep or a spiky fade would be to sell into Bitcoin. And that way, if, um, you know, ADA is in, in terms of dollar buggers off, you still got the dollar um, thing, but you're still in Bitcoin. So you're not completely left for dead. Mohammed, I read in your book that you, you had a lot of money by shorting the markets. How did you know the Black Monday is coming? That's a big topic. That's, that's for another topic, mate. Uh, I just got my certain algorithms. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I would seriously join the realistic trader.com. Just go to the realistic trader, join the community and there's way more learning there. Um, Haki Singh. So I've done a spiky fade on Axie Infinity and got burned. Didn't come back down to my entry and still didn't come down. So I bought back in at slight high, therefore lost some coins. Yeah, you've got to be careful. Con again, context, you have to know when to do it. For example, as I showed you today, um, Solana, is booming and even I'm not going to sidestep that I, as in spiky fade that although every bone in my body is screaming that it's going to come crashing back down to 56 to 50k uh, 50 dollars I'm not going to do it just yet I for, the, for me to do this I, I want it to get a little bit higher so I will uh, thoughts on Bitcoin outperforming alts if it breaks out to new highs nope Nope, nope, never. Bitcoin will never outperform alts, as in proper alts ever again. Remember, Bitcoin is the big old aircraft carrier that is slow and slow to turn. 
Um, and it's already done what, like something like 3 million percent growth from, from inception. It's, it's just lengthening cycles and diminishing returns from now on. It'll still go up, but it won't go up as fast as others. And so typically what happens is when Bitcoin goes down, alts go down a lot faster. And then, and also alts, and I'll say micro caps as well. So alt as in strong alts. So everything sort of, you know, paid one or two of uh, uh, coin market cap. And then, you know, micro caps. Micro caps are, are like ridiculous. They'll, at the same time, they'll really crash. But then what happens is then Bitcoin starts picking up. So Bitcoin will then start going back up. And then alts, etc., go absolutely nuts, even even faster. So alts just over exaggerate what Bitcoin does. But you won't in a bull market, alts will always, always, always outperform Bitcoin. Always. So that's that. Is Pax G tokenized gold? No idea. Never heard of it. Recently you showed charts that recent rise of a base with no backbone. However, since that the market has continued to rise. So if Bitcoin reaches resistance of 50k, how could this go pop in the short term or could it link into the rise of autumn seen before? Yeah, again, this all goes back to... Oh dear, I can hear my kids playing outside and it sounds like one of them's fallen off a bicycle. Crazy screaming. Grandma will look after them. Um, <laughs> so... I'll show you a chart. Uh, go. Where is it? Let's look at this one. Here we go. So this is a good chart. Um, so this is um, answering yours, Steve. So again, the the full context answer is in in the in the full sort of on chain analysis. But this chart will give you a little up sort of insight. So really, just need to look at the the green and the yellow. Uh, um, uh, red. It, here it says old coins and young coins. It's not the best analogy. Um, it's actually short-term holders and long-term holders. So what we're seeing is that these are inversely correlated. So the short-term holders are tourists. The Johnny Come Lately is the people that have no idea what they're doing in crypto. They don't understand it. They're just chasing profits. Um, and so they're very transient. So they come in, as you can see, um, we have the blow off top and then they bugger off because, oh no, I've lost loads of money. I'm never touching crypto again. And they bugger off. Hence why I call them the tourists. And so you can see every peak, they, they go rally up and then they, then they disappear. Rally up, disappear, and then disappeared recently here as well. On the flip side, you see where it says old coins. Jesus Christ, both kids are crying. One sec. My guess is that they've been playing chicken and they both crashed into each other. I had to stop them doing that yesterday. They literally, both in their bikes, or no, one in a go-kart, one in a bike, playing chicken. And I literally had to like jump in and grab the little one just before the go-kart smashed into his bike. <laughs> ah, kids. So I'm guessing they played chicken again, but grandma couldn't move fast enough. So, um, oh yeah, so here, we're looking at old coins. Oh, it's not a good terminology. Long-term holders, short-term holders. So what's happening now? It, and by the way, the re, and who do the short-term holders buy buy from when they're coming in? They're, they're coming from the the sophisticated investors. So as you can see, the green, the green is starting to fall. So they take profits along the way up. So a lot of sophisticated investors and hedge funds that they, they will take profits as markets rally. They don't always get out the top. I mean, look at other charts. They got out really at 50, 45, 50k last time round. And they sold to the short-term tourists. Well, recently, short-termers have died. They've fallen off a cliff. And the long-term hands have uh, bounced back. So this is very bullish. Whenever you see this, this uh, divergence, it's, it's quite bullish. Um, so, yeah, anyway, that's one, one way to go about it. But, yeah, there is, there's lots of strength in the market at the moment. Lots and lots of strength. Elena Yanni said, DCA, do you have a tutorial? Well, DCA means dollar cost averaging. I'm in the UK, so I call it PCA, pound cost averaging. Now, here's the thing. Let's say, so all it is, dollar cost averaging, pound cost averaging, averaging is basically where you just regularly buy crypto over the long run. 
And so if you were the world's worst investor, let's say you're the world's worst crypto investor and you just played with Bitcoin and every single month you bought in at the wrong, uh, at the highest point in time. So here you bought there, 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 there. Basically, I won't labor the point here. You bought in the, the worst price every single month. Guess what? You'll be wildly in profit still. And let's say you did this for a few years. Let's go back a few years. Let's say you bought in the worst prices, you know, since 2017. Here, 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 and all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. Your average cost basis, well, you, you know, most of your coins would have been bought below twenty thousand dollars. Well, oh, probably a lot less because during 2018, 2019, you've been buying them at around five, six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars. So. Most of your, your coins will actually be sort of five to ten thousand dollars, which means Bitcoin sat at forty six. Your whole savings will be roughly four hundred and sixty percent up. Um, so that's what pound cost averaging is or dollar cost averaging. Just buy every month and don't give a shit about the price. Simple as that. That's for someone that is not going to actively trade it. Um, Justin, what are the ten new technologies about to come online in the near future? They're not online as in they're about to hit exponential growth and what i mean by that is if you go back to the 1990s late 90s the internet was pretty much the only tech out there that hit exponential growth and look what the world's happened done like our whole lives are dictated on the internet um whereas now not just one we've got 10 and those 10 techs um i'll give you a little look i'll give you a little preview again there needs to be a lot more context behind this um but that's for another time this is not an exhaustive list, but it's this. And there's more than 10, by the way. So all of these techs are in exponential growth. And they're about to hit the hockey stick part. And they're all, all of those techs are going to have sex with each other and create super techs, which we haven't even thought of. Um, yeah. So I don't want to labor that point. Just trying to bust through these. Um, check out CQT, Kovalent, okay, uh, maybe. What do you think about Chia coin and its ecosystem? I'm not sure. I think it's got some, and no, I, I just don't know enough about it. I know, no, I'm, yeah, I only talk about things I know. I, I, I'm not familiar with Chia. By the way, every time I check coin market cap, um, there's like a million new projects. Like, there's 11,200 projects that i mean and there's probably tens of thousands that are, that are not registered on coin market cap just yet so there's always new 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 products out there um and every new product is hey we are the new bitcoin we can kill bitcoin everything we are the best so i just literally tune it all out sign what's the plan with gas buy it hold it stay stay in it um miguel if you had a had to do a spiky fade where would you put the en the re-entry roughly 50 percent of the of the overextension the market loves pulling back 50%. Um, is it a good time to be all out? All out in fee at the moment? Or should be all in? I'm all in. Every penny I have is in crypto. Um, thoughts on value investing? Yeah, same thing as... Um, oh, not the same thing. Value invest. Yeah. If you're value investing, you need to buy crypto. <laughs> um, if you're value investing um, and being... Or I would say efficient value investing... The logical conclusion means you don't dick around with anything else but crypto. When you're, when you're doing valuable, uh, efficient value investing. And I would combine that with pound cost averaging in over time. Uh, Haki, yeah, go to the realistictrader.com. Oh, Chris has done that below, yeah. Realistictrader.com. And literally in here, I, I, I share everything. So we go to my telegram so we have a facebook group for main chit chat but in the the telegram group i share uh, here's the on-chain update i did just before this video and all my moves every single thing i do um i, I put in here along with big old updates um yeah so that's that um including all my entry orders yeah. So, um, where da, 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 what, I'm trying to find more questions. Have you, 
Have you heard of new pro- Okay, a lot of these questions are, have you heard of this project? Have you heard of this project? My answer is going to always going to be no, and I'm not interested until it becomes a blue chip crypto. Like with crypto, there's so many things you can do. You could do with, you know, you could play around with, you know, DeFi, yield farming. You could do earn to play. You could play around with all the NFT stuff. There's so many different things you can do. And ultimately, I have to balance my everyday work with crypto. Um, and so I need, um, I, I just need everything to be quite easy to do. So as in less time consuming. So I'm, I'm, I'm well aware that I could get really head into NFTs and some online gaming, crypto gaming and stuff and make way bigger percentage. But I've got eight companies I have to run. So I don't have time to dick around with, with all of that stuff. Um, and also, yes, the, the, the returns may be absolutely crazy good in some of these other things, but then you have to always balance that with risk. Like, I don't particularly like the thought of, you know, YOLOing in on some sort of shitcoin, which, yeah, could go up a billion percent, but I could lose all of it. Um, so, yeah. One thing, you if let, let's say, for example, I did want to capture um, the massive rise in crypto gaming. Um, tokens at the moment and there is a massive rise and it's probably and it's most likely going to increase I can't be asked to do it but let's say I wanted to let's say I wanted to do that with the least amount of effort possible well what I'll do is I'll probably just put like you know 10% of my total portfolio um, into a big bunch of those gaming um, tokens so I'd find like 10 yeah probably like 10 promising gaming tokens I spend a little bit of time researching it and then just put the money in that and then just sit tight and then wait until they moon or not. That And that is the easiest way to do it. Tom, if you're on sidelines right now in Fiat, what level would you be targeting to get back in? Ooh, that's a tough, that's a toughie. Because it is full bull right now. Um, and when I say full bull, what that doesn't mean is that the, we're never going to have a pullback. Full bull full bull market in my opinion means yeah it's, it's going to be something like you know this where yeah we'll go all you know i mean this is a strong bull market but there's always pullbacks always i mean that's a massive pullback and there's lots of mini pullbacks and you can pick any market oh happened to ether this is full bull isn't it but it still managed to go from 2000 back down to 1300 so um i oh, it's a tough it's a tough one because in one aspect, the whole market looks overextended, um, or to a degree. But this is crypto, and most of the move is going to happen in November, November, December. So I would say now, mate, um, and maybe half of it in now, and then pound cost average over time, or, or keep a bit for a, a bit of a crash, uh, as in a pullback. It, it's a tough one, mate. Devi or Devi said, what brand Maggie do you eat? Well, Maggie. Maggie is the brand. Um, I Yeah, Maggie sauce. I have Maggie on like everything. I love it. Maggie and rice. Boom. Um, right. Uh, let's look at the questions. Fantastic usual. Any further info later down the line about borrowing assets from crypto? Feels a bit risky not having looked at this before. Yeah, I guess in the next live session, I'll, I'll do a, a borrowing um, session. So, yeah, because you, you have to be careful. I mean, the Poly Network got hacked. Was it 600 million got hacked the other day? So you, you have to be careful not to borrow on shitty shitty platforms, shitty exchanges using shitty currency. Um, so, yeah. Right. Has today helped? This has gone on for a, a lot longer than I thought. And it's crazy. There's 200 of you at some point. Now it's 140. So um, I I'm massively thank you for your time. Um, and yeah, by the way, there's going to be a lot less of these these sessions now, folks. Um, simply because I, I've got to look after my students more. Um, I've got my, the, in fact, in terms of my students, it, basically the world, my world revolves really around two sets of students. So one set of student is are the WAPers, so the Wealth Action Plan. So 
here this helps people get into business and set up business and do all that sort of stuff it's like a netflix but for getting rich <laughs> um so that's the wap and it's cheapest chips and then the other i guess my main community is the realistic traders these are my students um in the facebook group we've got a massive part ah oh, the party we've got this awesome big party um coming up soon and it's going to be like bigger than a wedding party. <laughs> I'm probably spending more on this this party than most people do on a wedding. Um, but it's going to be great. We're going to have like Batak, VR, virtu- VR racing sim competition, uh, all sorts of amusements, music, um, lots of booze. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm going off on one. So yeah, the Realistic Trader, if you want to see, uh, join the community there and, and also check out the WAP. Um, right. I'm going to love you and leave you. I need some food. I feel it peckish and I will see you soon. Bye.